Live from Nassau in the Bahamas, it's theCUBE, covering Polygon 18. Brought to you by Polymath. Okay, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's exclusive live coverage here in the Bahamas for Polycon 18, put on by Polymath and Grit Capital. I'm here with the CEO of both of those companies uh, who have been gracious enough to let us come in and, and tap into the bandwidth, tap into the guests, and host us here, theCUBE's uh, two days of exclusive coverage, had great guests. Uh, Trevor Coverco, CEO of Polymath, really changing the game. Security tokens are really kind of driving great, fast, accelerated innovation. And we have uh, Genevieve Rock Dector, who's our CEO of Grid Capital, funding it, being part of it. You guys created a great community. Welcome to theCUBE. Great, thanks for having us. So, live coverage, thank you very much. We really appreciate the collaboration with you guys, great guests. But there's something magical going on here. Um, you got a big event, it's a couple hundred, 400 people, but it feels like the early days of when I was in my 20s, the computer revolution, PC, and then the internet came. People are doing deals. This is a very intimate conference. You've got whales, billionaires, you've got entrepreneurs, you've got folks from investment banking companies coming into the sector, young guns, old <laughs> dudes and gals. Like, I mean, this is a melting pot. We, we have professional athletes too. Um, yeah, no, we, we've really brought together a cluster of different uh, different zones, if you will. Um, I come from the world of the Canadian equivalent of, uh, of, of, of Wall Street, Bay Street, and so we've got institutional investors here who don't have wallets, don't have coins, and are learning about it from the top crypto mines in the world, so it's quite magical. Um, I don't think Trevor and I have slept in 60 days. Yeah. Uh, we literally came up with this idea, it was supposed to be a very intimate setting of 20 or 30 people, and it's ballooned into 600, mostly because Trevor has so many friends um, and is partnering up with a lot of them on his projects. Um, so yeah, no, it's been, it's been a great time so and far. And Trevor, uh, yeah, and by the way, you're not sleeping because everyone's staying out till two in the morning. It's been great intimate gathering. People are, are mingling, um, but they're players. They're not pretenders here. This is a really interesting group. People who are investing their time. It's mission driven. You hear people talking about societal change, but there's money making going on too. You're powering that. I mean, yeah. you've got to be exhausted. How do you feel? Hey, look, I call it the, the, the eye of the hurricane. And this was like, if you weren't here this week in crypto, you're just not relevant. This, was, this is where you wanted to be. And it's all about the, the attendees. The, we, the caliber of, of the people that came just blew me away. Very humbled by um, the quality of people that we had here. And it's no surprise when you have a beautiful venue, like here in, in Bahamas and at Bahamar and amazing people, good things are going to happen. Community is a, a, a very important formula for success in this world. We've seen this movie before in open source software. You know, it started as a tier two citizen, now it runs software's tier one class capabilities. Cloud computing has been amazing growth. Crypto, same model, you know. It's emerged as the money, the value store, technology enablement. What are you guys seeing as the pattern? Because obviously people recognize that, certainly in the industry. If you don't, then you're going to miss the boat on this one. Most people who don't get it will probably miss the boat, but a lot of people are getting it. What is the pattern that's happening? Why is this moving so fast? Is it the wealth creation? Is it the money making? Is it the technology enablement? What's your guys' reaction to, to the why? What's yeah. the why here? I think it's, it's a convergence of a lot of mega trends going on right now, both on the technology and on the regulatory side. If you look at you know, the exciting sexiness of having these liquid tokens that kind of feel like stocks but are also um, utilities in the sense that you can use them to do certain things with, uh, that's a big component of it. But I think another reason is just there's a lot of um, strangling going on in the capital markets where you have a lot less companies going public, you have a lot more barriers uh, to raise capital in a, lot of, in a lot of ways. And this is kind of like light peeking through the hole where you have uh, you know, new ways, uh, reimagined ways to, to raise capital. Um, so we're seeing just a, a, a convergence of a lot of megatrends, I think. And a lot of pros are coming in, and they're either young pros that are learning and growing with this trend, the young guns, I call them, and then you've got pros coming in from other industries, whether it's banking and other sectors. Um, this is interesting. So the question I have before you is um, the security token. This has been a big deal. A lot of companies have seen 
the ICOs on the utility side, certainly the SEC in the US has been really sending signals pretty radically like, hey, don't pump and dump, I don't want to see any, watch that advisor stuff, and oh, by the way, show me the utility, how we test, et cetera, et cetera that the startups who have to build the future were trying to rush a utility token out, now have a safe harbor in the security token, and existing companies can raise money with the security token that are tokenizing a real business. This is a pretty important point. Can you guys share some color commentary on that dynamic? Do you agree with it? And then if you do, share some color around this whole trend. Yeah, I mean, Right now, if you look today, there's, there's two major categories of tokens, as you alluded to. You have utilities on the one hand, and securities on the other hand. And the distribution right now is extremely one-sided. Security tokens are dominated by utilities. Utilities like Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, they make up 99% of the total market cap of all coins. So, where, where does that leave us? Well, it depends. Today, it means all the action is in utilities. There's more upside, they're faster, they're simpler. I'm very bullish on utilities. But uh, what's, what's even more exciting to me is the mega trend, the tsunami of, of real world financial assets migrating to the blockchain. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see as the next kind of part two, second wave of crypto is real world, tangible assets tokenizing and migrating to the blockchain. And you know what, I think you know the SEC kind of gets uh, a bad rep in all this, but the rules are there for a certain reason, uh, to protect investors. And I think that this industry is, is in the beginning, it's nascent, and you know, with Trevor's company, Polymath, introducing uh, the securities token, uh, literally, I think you coined the word, um, it's growing up. It's an industry yep. that has to, you know, it's going to have some red tape too, right? And I think working with the regulators and, and Trevor's company has has done that. Um, you know, befriend them and, and and be open source about it and, and communal. And um, you know, there's certain aspects about the regulations that are, are not good, and, and we don't want um, you know communication and, and the communities that have formed. Um, you know, Telegram's a great example of this. So there's a lot of these chat rooms that I'm in, and, and literally people are sharing information about companies and teaching each other and learning and and, and that's great um, but you know there is an asymmetry of information sharing that mm -hmm. at some point you know we have to rein that in but we don't want to lose the, the positive yeah. aspects you could choke the innovation if you put too much regulatory on it the innovation won't grow so you have to have a balance I mean as you're saying right I mean you got to get through it mm -hmm. but redefine a new era I mean, the SEC is not, in the US has not been too bad. I think they're just sending a signal and I think they're not, I mean, they could be hardcore. They could be harder core, I think, than they are, but thank God they're not. I mean, you want to let these startups figure out what to do. All right, so I got to talk about liquidity and funding. So Grit Capital, yeah, you guys are involved in investments. Also, you're enabling partnerships at Polymath. Um, a lot of people you're connecting into your system. We had one on earlier. The funding environment, certainly, a lot of investors are here. I talked to probably at least a dozen actively investing, different profile makeup, some go hardcore protocol under the hood, some are more business, looking at decentralized apps. Makeup, persona, trends, can you share? Yeah, you well, know that world. <laughs> eight, eight, eight months ago, um, so I'm from Toronto, I'm from Canada, eight months ago there was literally no publicly traded blockchain company uh, in Canada. Um, and now there's probably, I think 70? Um, you know, new one every day, name change. But yeah, there's been a lot of equity uh, raised. There's two companies about to go public, actually, in Canada. Uh, Hot 8 Mining, who's their sponsor here mm -hmm. at the conference, and Galaxy Digital, Michael Novokratz's company. And I think between the two of them, they've raised almost uh, half a billion dollars uh, in, ca in capital. Um, or like market capitalization mm -hmm. when they go public, probably about 250 million in actual capital. Um, but that's huge. Those, those checks were written not by just high net worth people, but actual institutions. Yeah. And the, the, the those, those people that are here today, they're, they're, they're good with writing equity checks, um, ICO checks, and, and, and that is, is going to come. And I think yeah. the securities token aspect of it yeah. will give them a lot of comfort that, um, that they can write checks in, in those kinds and of things. And how's, how's Grid Capital? Talk, I mean, talk about Grid Capital. 
Yeah, so very simply, we introduce companies to capital holders, um, investors. So I was a portfolio manager for nine years. Um, and I like to say I was in the no game for nine years. Because uh, when you're portfolio manager. Now you're in the yes game. Yeah, you're, you're goaltending. You're like trying not to let bad deals in. And that wasn't really conducive to my personality. Yeah. And now I'm in the yes game. I am, you know, I like this company. I'm going to invest in it. But I'm going to introduce them to these other capital holders. Yeah. And it's a, it's a positive experience. How much is community involved in what you do? Because we're seeing, obviously, the pattern of of kind of paying it forward, which is great culture, but also people are, you know, help scratch my back, I'll scratch your back on deal flow and also participation. It seems to be a big part of the current rules of engagement or implied protocol. Is that going on? Yeah, you know, look, I think this is a very collaborative ecosystem, and it has to be because by definition, you know, open source communities are powered by the people that make it up. And you and it's 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 all about volunteering, about helping, about giving back. And it's one of the reasons I'm I'm so passionate about this space. I think you should probably talk about your your fund that you just announced that you're launching, and it probably plays into so Trevor's network is is global. It's extensive. He has deal flow coming at him all, all right, the so time. So what's in that? Don't new news. Yeah, and what Share are you going to do with that deal flow? You hold the news back. <laughs> yeah, we got a bit of a, we got a bit of a brain freeze. I've had so many you're burnt out. Uh, yeah, we're we're doing a lot of exciting initiatives right now, and part of um, what I'm excited about, and also. <laughs> Uh, slightly intimidated by is that there's just so much opportunity, there's so many um, key components of this new infrastructure that need to get built that aren't in existence yet that um, it's easy to get you know, carried away. But uh, for me it's about prioritizing and finding out the real kind of high leverage initiatives that are going to help um, help us achieve our goals. And so you're putting a fund together to invest in the ecosystem or is it for financial investment? Is it a, as a crypto fund or is it like, what are you, what's going on? One of those initiatives is uh, a securities token focused venture fund. This would be the first one that I know of that exists and it would be to help um, our ecosystem get financed and that's a big component of, of this uh, marketplace is capital, is yeah. investors, is um, demand. And, and we just want to channel all that to the best deal. So, um, so, so polymath so ecosystem is important to you guys. Polymath, that your ecosystem is strategic, right? Yes. Well, how do you see that playing out? What's your vision? Well, what do you hope to unfold in your ecosystem? Obviously, as people connect in, there's a variety of things that you can help people with, and vice versa. What, how do you see your ecosystem uh, rolling out? Well, part of it is I want an arm's length organization that has its own kind of mandate, its own charter. And um, the way I look at it is if you look at Ethereum, which I'm very familiar with being from Toronto and knowing yeah. those guys kind of since day one, uh, they opted not to do a venture fund, but if they had, it would have been literally the most- uh, High performance uh, fund ever. <laughs> ever, of all time, yeah. Just, you know, just mathematically speaking. So uh, we don't want to lose out on, on an opportunity like that. And, mm -hmm. and in the process of, of building another, you know, potentially profitable entity, we want to also uh, see the ecosystem and, and help projects that uh, we're excited about get the first check. Who are you looking for in your ecosystem? Is it developers? Because obviously Ethereum, we're Ethereum developers, we have an ERC20 token. We love it, it's easy to work with. Smart contracts are easy to work with. So it's clearly a developer market on that side. Are you guys looking for the same? Is it different kind of uh, partner? What is some of the partner makeup that you hope to attract in case they're watching now? Why should they work with you? Who are they? Describe the, the persona of your ideal ecosystem partners or partner. For better or worse, we have uh, a lot of, of uh, verticals that we have to uh, build communities within. So those are uh, the business community. We want leaders, we want action takers, we want people that can structure deals. We want legal professionals. That's a big component of the security token landscape is the regulation, is the uh, exemptions and the offerings and the memorandums and all the legal stuff. Yeah. So we need a legal community. And then uh, finally, and most importantly, we need a developer community. Yeah. We need uh, multi best technical minds, profile, basically. Just, just like any other uh, decentralized project. So. Um, that's what my full-time job is when people ask me, is building communities uh, within our broader community. Well, I can tell you, give you props, one, because I know you're super busy, and you're drinking from the fire hose at all levels, and certainly the event's been great. Um, I think a breath of fresh air, a sigh of relief from the, from the world when we see entrepreneurs, at least from the perspective of the entrepreneurs and, and the markets, is that security token, finally, someone just made a decision. Let's just use the security token as a way to get the funding and get set up and not foreclose the option for, say, a utility token. Why rush and force a utility it needs to be built out? And a lot of these utilities have really missed out 
because they had to run so fast to write code funded by a utility that has a test. Yeah. So I think you guys are doing a great service, so I want to give you props for that. Thank you, yeah, I would uh, wholeheartedly agree. I think a lot of these so-called utility coins are uh, actually uh, securities masquerading as utilities. Yep. And, um, you know, I think that's the game everyone kind of realized. Like, okay, great, now you got the platform. So what's the update on the, the platform, the company? Take a quick minute to ex uh, explain to the folks about Polymath. We are you know, inundated and overwhelmed with demand right now. And we have thousands, tens of thousands of signups on both the investor and issuer side. And um, kind of my goal right now on a day-to-day -day basis is to scale our onboarding process so we can take all of these issuers and give them a secure and robust token that they can fundraise on top of. And we are um, in the process of unveiling our application layer that's going to make that uh, kind of self-serve process um, exciting and scalable. Well, congratulations and Grid Capital. Genevieve, thanks for uh, connecting. Great to connect with you. Shout out to Bill Tai who uh, made it happen it was for Bill Tai and Genevieve. The Cube would not be here. And of course, Polymath uh, supporting us as well has been great. So thank you very much. Thank you. Great event. And uh, we'll keep on following you guys. And uh, thanks for coming on, sharing the success. Final question, craziest thing that's happened here this week, uh, one, two, three, I, things that might have won, craziest thing that's happened, it could be good, bad, or ugly, did someone <laughs> fall in the pool? Oh, I got a Was someone found on the beach, share there, a funny story or two. We found a mermaid. There was a mermaid, yeah. A real live mermaid, <laughs> we actually found a mermaid, and we put her in the pool for the, the cocktail event. And we almost put Trevor in the pool as a merman, <laughs> just to so balance merman, it out. <laughs> merman, we're a, a mermaid neutral company, we have <laughs> mermen as well. <laughs> and, uh, geez, what else? We had, uh, a friend of ours decided to get the jacuzzi suite at the, the top floor, and um, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the movie uh, Scarface, but there was a lot of uh, uh, opulence going on, which was, which was a little more, more than I bargained for, yeah. and then uh, Genevieve being the celebrity that yeah. she is. Um, what do you think? Um, I mean, there's been so much. Like, we've had literally 13 side events within the conference, yeah. so uh, drinking from a fire hose is, is an understatement, I would say. Uh, there's still more to do. We're going to Cabana Pool Party now, so maybe, uh, I think there's going to be a bull there, so a stampede uh, security bull there. Oh, geez, is there? Yeah. And maybe the SCC? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, congratulations. You guys are doing a great service in the industry, and I love how you brought together the inner circle, major players. Really, the community really admires that, so appreciate your help. Okay, this is Cube Live coverage here in the Bahamas. More interviews after this short break. Stay with us.